In this video, I want to go over some calculus that will be very useful to us in the coming semester. In particular, I want to talk about partial derivatives and something that can be built from partial derivatives, namely the gradient, which is a sort of three-dimensional vector derivative. Okay, so to talk about partial derivatives, let's consider a function f that is a function not only just so, say of x, but also of y and z. So this is a function of three co-independent variables, and let's say it has this form. So this is basically a mishmash of x, y, and z, and two constants, which we'll call a and b. Okay, now, if this function, this could, function could be varied many ways. You could vary it by changing x, you could vary it by changing y, you could vary it by changing z. You could vary them all together, or you could vary them independently. So partial derivatives are, in some sense, a measure of how, what happens when you vary this function with any one of these variables independently of the others. So we denote a partial derivative with a d that doesn't have a tail on it. So this d without a tail f, d without a tail x, partial derivative of f with respect to x, tells us how this function varies if we change x, but not y or z. Okay. So, operationally, here's what happens. When you take the partial derivative of f with respect to x, you simply treat y and z as constants. If you take the partial derivative of f with respect to y, you treat x and z as constants. And likewise, if you take the partial derivative of f with respect to z, you treat x and y as constants. So, let's do this. Let's take these derivatives. So, partial derivative of f with respect to x, well, we use the same rules uh, with regard to sums and products and so forth as with ordinary derivatives. So to take the partial derivative of this function with respect to x, I have to take the partial derivative of this with respect to x, and then the partial derivative of this with respect to x. So here we go with the first term. a and y squared are constants with respect to x, and then the derivative of x cubed with respect to x is 2x squared. So that's the partial derivative of this first term with respect to x. Now we need to take the partial derivative of the second term with respect to x. But we look at it and we see no x is in there. With respect to x, y and z are constants, and of course b is a constant. So it's just one big fat constant. Derivative of constant with respect to x is zero. Great, so that's the deriv partial derivative of f with respect to x. We can now take the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So now we're taking a partial derivative with respect to y. We treat x and z as constants. Constant, constant. Okay, so partial derivative of, of the first term with respect to y. Well, the a and the x cubed are constants, and I gotta take the derivative of y squared with respect to y. That's just 2y. And then the next term, b, and z to the fifth are constants. I gotta take the derivative of y to the fourth with respect to y. That would be 4y cubed. Great, now I could rearrange it if I want, but that is the partial derivative of this function f with respect to y. All right, I'm gonna leave it to you to take the partial derivative of this function f with respect to z. So pause the video, take a moment to work it out, and then restart the video and I'll show you the answer. Okay, you've restarted the video. If we take the derivative of, partial derivative of f with respect to z and make it look nice, this is the result. Okay, now, partial derivatives are useful in their own right, but they're also very important as, something, as part of something known as a gradient. So this thing, this uh, downward pointing triangle in front of an f, this means the gradient of f. The gradient of f, first of all, let's notice what it is. It's a vector. It's got something times x hat plus something times y hat plus something times z hat. x hat, y hat, and z hat are unit vectors pointing in the x, y, and z directions respectively. Uh, if you prefer, you could also use i, j, or k in place of x hat, y hat, z hat. They mean the same thing. Okay, so the x component of the gradient of f is just the partial derivative of f with respect to x, assuming f is some multivariable function of x, y, and z. Uh, the y component 
of the gradient of f is the partial derivative of f with respect to y, and so forth. All right, so we could take the gradient of this function f, uh, but let's take a simpler one to make it just a little easier. So let's consider this function f of x, y, and z, which is some constant a times x squared times z cubed. Let's take the gradient of this. All right, so the first term of this gradient here, uh, which is going to be uh, in front of the x hat, we need to take the partial derivative of this f with respect to x. That will be 2axz cubed. Great. Now, this term of the gradient, this term right here, uh, we need to take the partial derivative of f with respect to y, but there are no y's in there, so with, re with respect to y, all of this is a constant, so partial f with respect to y, big fat zero. Finally, we need to take the partial derivative of f with respect to z, put it in here. All right, to do that, we'll have 3a x squared, z squared. And so we've therefore taken the gradient of f. Okay, just to summarize again, the gradient is a three-dimensional uh, vector derivative. The direction of this, if you were to like figure out the direction based on this x and zero y component and z component, uh, the direction gives the direction of the maximum rate of change with respect to x, y, and z. Uh, the magnitude of that would give you the magnitude of the rate of spatial variation of this function, assuming x, y, and z are uh, spatial coordinates. Okay, uh, so this is a vector. Sometimes you'll see a, a, a arrow written over this downward pointing triangle. Sometimes you'll see the triangle itself written in bold. But the important thing to remember is that the gradient of a function ends up being a vector. Okay, so why do we care about the gradient? Well, there's lots of reasons to care about the gradient. It's an important uh, element of vector calculus. But in physics, uh, I'll give you a couple of really important applications. First, if we know some potential energy function, uh, call it u, so we could have gravitational potential energy, or electric potential energy, or spring potential energy. If we know the functional dependence of the potential energy, of the potential energy function, uh, we can take the negative of the gradient of that potential energy function and we'll get the associated conservative force. And I'll go over a couple of examples of that in a separate video. Uh, in the study of electrostatics, if we know something called the electric potential, that is if we know how the electric potential function varies in space, uh, we can take the negative of the gradient of the electric potential function and get some vector quantity known as the electric field. Um, electric potential, by the way, that's often what people are referring to when they talk about things that are in voltages, volts and voltages. All right, so we have a couple of important applications of the gradient. Uh, the gradient and partial derivatives are important in their own right. So hopefully you found this uh, short summary uh, useful. Thank you.